Hi and welcome to my third video in the series about populations. Today we're going to be looking at predator-prey interactions and, and also human population graphs. And what this graph basically shows is the interaction between these two populations. And so we can see here the start that the population of the prey goes up quite markedly. You'll then see, just f latently following that, the increase in the population of species A, the predator. And the reason for the increase in the number of predators will be essentially because there's more food available. More food available means um, essentially they'll be more likely to survive. More likely to survive means more likely to breed. More likely to breed will pass on um, their genetic traits. And as the predators increase, the problem the problem comes is when it reaches a a large enough amount to have a, a big influence on the population of the prey. And because there are a lot of predators present, this brings down the number of prey very, very rapidly because they're all getting um, hunted. And once, at this section of the graph, once the numbers reach a low enough amount, um, therefore the predators don't have enough food, um, and so therefore their numbers begin to drop. And so you get this whole cycle of increases and decreases. And so what we're going to go on to look at now is human population. And first of all, we have to establish a few key terms. So birth rate. And that is the number of births per 100,000 of the population. Um, and so what they've done, the birth rate is always um, per an amount of a population. Um, so it's never just the number of people born. It's always per population. It enables a comparison um, in some respects. The death rate is exactly the same. Again, it's related to a number per. Um, and usually that's 100,000. So it's the number of deaths per 100,000 of the population. Now immigration um, can affect a human population because of course immigration means people to move in um, and hence um, the UK border agency people moving in. Emigration uh, means people moving out so in this case going abroad maybe to the US and so those are things that can actively affect the populations um, of a given place. And so what we're looking at here are different types of population graphs that you might come across in a particular exam question. And so that second type there, or the second graph there, is what we'd refer to as a stable population. Um, similarly, the third graph um, also represents a stable population. And what you'll notice with the stable population is there's even distribution. Um, the population, you always expect this kind of tr almost triangular shape. Um, but it's not hugely wide at the bottom and it's not hugely narrow at the top. You'll find there's very, very um, small differences between each um, age group. Whereas this first graph, what this one shows us is the fact that it's so wide at the bottom and it's very narrow at the top. This shows a growing population because it shows a greater proportion of younger people. And hence, more young people, you'd expect the population to be growing. And so that's characterised by a bottom section that's very very wide and hence this one's our growing population so an opposite to that obviously is a um, shrinking or a reduced or reducing population that's represented by this one on the right here and what you've noticed is very narrow at the bottom and then it hands this bulge around the middle and what this means is there's more people of middle age and less younger people and so this shows a population that is um, reducing and hence there we go and so in summary what we've looked at is the interaction between predators and prey and the variations that can occur in their populations. We've looked at population graphs going from a stable um, to a growing to a decreasing population. If you join me next time we'll be looking through some exam questions to do with populations.